What you're about to experience are my opinions and truths. I'm suggesting their possibilities for you to consider, in which you can then come up with your own logical conclusions. Welcome out everyone, all of you great decoders around the world, wherever you may be, both male and female. My name is Logan and this of course is Decode Your Reality and today we're going to be breaking down and decoding the mousetrap. This will be mouse trap decoded and I hope in the beginning of this I did a few video snippets Try to get the point across. The mouse that we use, I'm using one right now. You probably use one. But it's for a computer and it's a fractal down. And I feel that this is a very telling story about mankind being used, being controlled remotely. And the hand on the mouse is controlling us. Maybe not that exact way but it definitely is linking to that. And I will be showing that during this presentation. So I wanted to start off. And if you haven't seen my rat in a cage, part one and part two on my channel, please check it out. They're only three and five minutes long, very short ones. You can make it all the way through. And you'll see that I showed there just using, I think, Chaldean and the whole entire thing that mankind is an experiment. <coughs> Excuse me. Mankind is an experiment. And we're being used. And I stand by that just because of the deep research that I continue to do. And, you know, this mouse and the cheese is a really funny uh, illustration here. And I mean, folks, how many mice get experimented on over the course of our lives? I mean, when you go and look this up, look at the number. This is, you know, in one year over a hundred million and many of them are being you know tortured and i mean just for the progression of the human being experience and so does, does it just stop there i mean us as a society living inside this self-contained system called earth is i mean is it too far-fetched to believe that we're an experiment i mean you can study about the history of the lab rat and I mean, I'm an animal lover, so I, I, I'm not a fan of this, but it's, this is real stuff. Anyways, let's get started with this presentation, ladies and gentlemen. Let me try to navigate and be your tour guide for this presentation to show you. Put on a pair of headphones. I promise you another gem. And I'm going to support that mankind is being used. So let's start off with this game right here that came out in 1963. I played it when I was a kid. I was born in 73. Maybe you played it. I tried to sneak it in here. I couldn't really get all the characters in here because of so much information. But it came out in 1963 by this company, Ideal. Same company that created the Rubik's Cube. Came out with the Rubik's Cube. How about that? Think about what I'm telling you. Mousetrap, Rubik's Cube. Yeah, not a coincidence there. And the inventor of Mousetrap, it's this guy right here, Marvin Glass, and his company, Marvin Glass and Associates. And it's, I mean, his name, 19 and 13, 32, direct match in the same cipher of Game Master. I've been showing this. Game Master and 32, and 32, remember, is the transmutation of water from a liquid state at 33 degrees Fahrenheit 
down to 32. So this is the transmutation from spirit into matter. That's what this means. 32 degrees Fahrenheit is zero degrees Celsius. Go bring that in the tarot and you're going to get the fool card. It's the fool coming down and playing out the physical reality in the mousetrap, becoming a mouse. So this was really interesting right here. If you have not seen the highlights of this Universe 25 experiment done by John Calhoun back in um, the 1960s, I think it was, that he did this, or 70s, I don't remember the date, but I don't even know. I tried to find it, why it was named the Universe 25 experiment. I couldn't find it, but nonetheless, I mean, there's a direct match to Mouse. I mean, so was this guy a fan of numerology? Because I know he's not trying to screw you over or mock you, folks. No, the guy was doing experiments, and it wasn't his first one. But anyway, this is definitely something you should check out. Here is the original film for this. I'm going to leave these links in the description of this video if you want to go clear. I would definitely encourage you to watch all this stuff. He goes through all these experiments that he did. It's really interesting. And then I'm going to leave this link as well. And basically, the premise of this... This is this experiment. You start off with four mice in a utopian setting where they had nothing to worry about, no predators, nothing. And it ended up dying out. It turned into an apocalypse. Essentially, like it turned heaven into hell. And this wasn't his first one. So there's many layers to this. Obviously, the takeaway was it was overpopulation, uh, but it was behavior change behavior change just on the premise of being crowded now there's many other facets to this i feel like there's going to be personality changes in here and there may be nobody coming back from that but there's a lot of interesting layers to this and how we can relate this to being a human being how we can relate that to being a human being and i'd like to hear what you got from this this was to me absolutely fascinating i looked at this years ago didn't think i'd be doing this presentation with this now but here we are so check this out but look at the connection bam 25 mouse so i don't know maybe he was a fan of numerology who knows but there's the connection and you're going to see the chaldean once again standing tall top dog cipher in my opinion so let's get into the topics of this presentation in the zero position, the intro just did that. Number one, remote control mouse. Number two, X and Y. Number three, mouse invention. And then number four, the title of this decode, mouse trap. And then the, you know, number five, always love to hear what you see during these presentations. Keep your comments coming. Love to hear your observations. I miss things and, but, let me, let me hear what you got to say. So let's get into the first topic now called remote control mouse. The remote control mouse. And bam, right off the bat, folks. If you can wrap your mind around this right here. Well, I mean, this I could just leave it right here and you got it all figured out. Because it's 20 is duality. And then we bring in these cards called the medicine cards. Now, if you're not familiar with these, here they are right here. And these are, there are 52 of these, similar to the tarot, the cards of illumination, but they use animals, insects, reptiles, etc., etc. These were designed in 1988. 1988. And I can promise you, Jamie Sames, you create them. She was a Native American. David, the author, Native American. They're not trying to screw you over. They're not trying to mock you. Okay? This are, these people designed these cards because they were supposed to design the cards because they're following their script. That's it. It's as simple as that. And, of course, as fate would have it, here's the script playing out as we decode it. So the word duality is 20. What do you think we're all in? What do you think we all are? Rats in a cage, we're mice. And when we build the mouse for the computer, we're now controlling a fractal down below us. But we are a fractal down. Think of the Truman Show, 
think of Westworld, et cetera, et cetera. Let's keep going. I'm going to show you how valuable these uh, medicine cards are. I'm just going to show you how ridiculously scripted this reality is. And we're going to bring now in some mathematics. So we got the medicine card 20 mouse and duality tied to 20. Remember the word pawn equals 20, Jesuit equals 20, Mason equals 20. Oh, they don't get a hall pass. But when we bring it into the string of pi, the number 20 occupies digits 53 and 54. Doesn't include the three point. I'll be showing it both ways. When you add up the 53 and 54, you're going to get 107. And it's going to lead to this element right here called silver. Silver, the average is 106.905, but in science, this is isotope 107 because you're going to round up the 905 and you're going to move it to the 107. And so the 107 is tied to the number 20 in pure mathematics. We make up pi through our emotions of love and fear. And silver is the most electric element on the entire periodic table. So think about that, what I just said. The most electrical. We live in a magnetic and electric universe. We have a circulatory system. It's all in the human design here. And then just to put a nail in the coffin with this, there's the 20 again with silver. 20 representing duality and us being mice. And then we create the mouse for the computer. Now we control inside the screen and the monitor. What's controlling us? So this mouse is a 25. The mouse is a 25. What does that say in the string of pi? 25 occupies digits 90 and 91. That includes the three point. There are many ways to look at this. Obviously, the two ways actually using the three point, including it or not including it. So it would be digit 89, 90 and 91 if you include the three point or take it away. But when you take the 90 and 91 and you add it up, you're going to get the 181. And just like that, we now have a connection to a prime number. 181 is the 40, excuse me, 42nd prime number. <coughs> and this is important because we then link it to the bat card. Just keeping in the medicine cards to show you how ridiculously coded and scripted and how comical this reality is. Using the 1988 Native American deck called the medicine cards. And we now have the bat. And the bat, of course, is a representation of living upside down in the upside down world. That's how the first camera kind of showed it. The camera, camera obscura. Put light through a hole and it mirrors, it flips it. And this 42 is really big, ladies and gentlemen, because then we bring in some more mainstream and it's Douglas Adams and Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And there's the 42. I, I decoded 42. You should check it out. One of my most popular, one of my, mo my most liked. Had a lot of fun doing that one. This author has the mouse right in there. I have this and broke down the, mou the mouse, the whale, and the dolphin. You should see the numerology of that. Totally scripted, folks. So then we have the bat from the mouse. Found from the mouse, we go to math, we go to primes, and then we go back to the card again, and now we have the bat. And then... We can go and add alchemy into this and the bat 42 becomes the element molybdenum. And this comes from the Greek word molybdos, which means lead. And it's element 42, 42. And if you want to talk about lead to gold, if you go 42 all the way to gold 79, there's going to be more keys to the kingdom right there. If you take 42 and you add 43 and 44 and 45 and 46 and go all the way to the number 79, ladies and gentlemen, those of you that are fans of math, you're going to get this number right here. 2299. Put it into the string of pi. Bam! Look at where it's found. There's pi right there. So lead to gold using what I just told you. Of adding 42 all the way to 79, it's going to give you pi. We live in pi. We make up pi, folks. We live in the mousetrap. And this molybdenum has an average weight of 95, but it's most abundant. I love showing the most abundant. This is isotope 98, but it's 97.905. And 
we go right back to the 25 again because the 97 is the 25th prime number shazam it's right there and then we go back to mouse see it just all makes a, it's like a round 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 and around circle jerk is what it is and it's just comical this whole thing so let's keep going and show you one more example so the mouse is a 25 showed you how it's linked to the bat now it's linked to the fox straight up and the fox of course the you know the sneaky sly cunning one most of you should know fox when you break these all the way down it's 666 666 666 and then when we go over here more comedy so, I mean, it's just more fitting again that Fox is 20, duality is a 20. And this duality is 666, which is the great beast below. We make that up. And I'm going to support that again with another example just in a little bit. It's 666. So let's get into the X and Y now, the next topic. X and Y. Let's go right back to the definition of this computer mouse. Here's the modern type. And then here's the first one ever created. And it's on a wheel system. So when you read about this, it's right here. It used two separate wheels, the wheel of pi and phi. The wheel, there, they, it's right there. And this is what created the mouse movement, the cursor movement. Of course, it was built and came out in 1968, the first demonstration, 1968. Go to my Pi and Phi decoded, you'll see what the 68's tied to. Erbium, which right again goes back to duality. See how funny this code is, folks? It's all scripted, but there it is, 1968. First time they ever dis demonstrated it. It was created before that, but here are the two mouses, and the wheel is the big takeaway. When it was first made, then it went to a ball. Now it's a laser. That's the technology, but it went off these X and Y. The X wheel and the Y wheel. So we can bring that into our chromosomes, of course, because we're the mice. So the Y chromosome is in males, where we have the X and Y, and then the females have two X chromosomes. And it's the X and the Y. Females have two X chromosomes, male have the X and the Y, so I decided to break that down. And I, this is the value of the English, getting the numbers of the exact placement of these letters. 1 to A through Z, 1 through 26, it's 97. What is that 97 again? It's the 25th prime. What is 25? It's the mouse. See how tightly woven this code is? It's just funny. What are we to do with it? Get mad at it? Get angry? No one's trying to mock you folks. No one. This is the source code that has always been here, always will be here, playing out in the background, running the script, running the show. You just gotta, you're just along for the ride like me and you. Just have fun with it, ladies and gentlemen. So let's get into now the invention of the mouse. I already showed the first one, but let's talk about when they first did the demonstration. It's called, it was called the mother of all demos. It was in San Francisco at the Fall Joint Computer Conference. And here's Douglas Engelbart, who was the inventor of the first mouse. The big takeaway was the day this conference was on, December 9th. And there's that 1968, showed you that's tied to duality. But December 9th being the 343rd day of the year, very special day because when you bring it into the string of pi, bam, there it is. It's the 666. It's, it's the great beast below. We live in it. The great beast is 600. And 66, this is supporting that. Tied to the mouse, the first mouse ever created. It's right there, the, the computer mouse. Right here, you go look this stuff up. Man, I, if you haven't seen my computer decoded, I highly suggest doing that. It was all 666 symbolism and, and people being used. But anyway, here's the guy who invented the first mouse, Douglas Engelbart. And then here's the guy who actually created the first prototype, Bill English. There it was. There's the wheel. Right there. Made of wood. How far have we come? Don't use wood anymore. 
But what's really interesting is when you do the numerology of these two guys hooking up to create the first mouse. It's 117. I'm going to bring that into the string of pi, of course. 117 occupies three digits. 95, 96, and 97, including the three point. Once again, there's that tightly woven, <laughs> almost uncanny and infamous 97 being the 25th prime number and tied to the word mouse. Even this guy right here, his last name is English. Let me just show you. He's the guy who made the prototype. Look at, look at what his last name equals. <laughs> Same as this. Oops. I mean, you can, how, how scripty can you get, folks? You think his parents knew he was going to create the mouse? Maybe they were fans of Chaldean. And they're just trying to screw everybody over and mock people. No, no. That's, that's, that's my, my dry humor, folks. That's retarded thinking. Anyway, here's Douglas with his first mouse holding it. And what I thought was really interesting <laughs> is Douglas's first name is the same as this guy right here. Douglas Adams, who obviously came out with Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. He was a big piece of my 42 decoded and bam, there it is. Douglas Adams. And it's funny because his last name is Adams, like the first, the first man, Adam. It's just so funny. This code. The, 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 whatever created this reality is a stand-up comedian. Can be really ugly at times. Absolutely. It's everything though. And this reality is not real to it. It can't be. That's why all this stuff is allowed. But again, you go back to this 42. So Douglas, did Douglas know Douglas? Were they buddies? I mean, the funny part, he was born in 1925. He was born in 1952. It's a mirror of that. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, what do you see here? Am I stretching it? Well, again, the 42. And we go back to this, the mouse. Engelbird was known, to, he made the first mouse. Well, mouse is 25 and it leads to the 42, which leads to Douglas's Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and the Bat and the Batman. I could have decoded Batman, the first comics coming out in 1939. The guys that created that, man, it's just, it just, it just goes on and on. It's never ending, folks. The hours I spend doing this, it just, I, I laugh. I get emotionally involved with the laughter because it's just, it's, it's funny. I don't even know what else to do anymore. All right, so let's get into the... Um, the last topic now, the last topic, I saved probably the best for last. I don't know, the, those were pretty good slides, but last one, mousetrap, the title of this decode. So the word mousetrap is 40. Kevin Clark, that's your birthday card, brother. <laughs> but anyway, the 40 is tied to the ace of spades, but I decided to take this 40 I like looking at so many different angles and I'm like, okay, what's the 40th day on the, on the calendar? Cause you know, these cards are tied into the calendar. Well, it's February 9th, otherwise known as 29. That can be decoded as well into copper and the Yodhe Vahe and Yaldabaoth and all that stuff. But anyway, the February 9th card is the freaking 42nd card in the deck. So, I mean, I'm just gonna show you, be really transparent. Here's the boilerplate chart for the cards of illumination. Here's February right here. And we come down to the February 9th. And it's the three spades. And the three spades is the 42nd card in the deck. There it is. If you want these graphics, just send me an email and I'll send them to you. Decode your reality at gmail.com. But bam, there it is. Right. Once again, going back to Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Life, the universe, everything. The secret. It's 42. See how tight, see how this code is? It's just so funny, folks. I don't know what else are we to do. There's the mouse right there in the little logo. And it leads to the planet Jupiter. And this was a huge discovery for me. I've been tinkering with Jupiter for a long time. I have a, I have a deco coming out on the, um, the Shemitah 50th golden year soon. I have the coming out. It's heavily invested with Jupiter. Jupiter has the great red spot on it. And what I think is the all-seeing eye. Of course, Jupiter ascending, I'm working on that one. It's tied to Abraxas. But when you look at Jupiter's logo, there's a lot of connections in there. 
You get the 42, you get the 24. 24 is tied to our chromosomes. 42 is tied to this card. Life, the universe, everything. You even have the 420, and then you'd have the 1 right there. 421 or 241. It would probably be the 2, the 4, and the 1. 241 is the 53rd prime number. That's the I. I am. I am that I am. It's got the I right there. Go look it up. 241, 53rd prime number. I'm going to show you the iodine. But anyway, this mousetrap being the number 40, I'm going to bring that into the string of pi, of course. I'm going to fact check it against pure math. And lo and behold, there it is, 71 and 72. Add those up, you're going to get a permutation of pi. How about that? Oh, what are the odds, I wonder? Using pure math, say it isn't so. <laughs> but is the, there's the 143. It's a permutation of pi right there. Of course, 143, though, not only being a permutation of pi, but it's tied to this element right here called neodymium. Neodymium, of course, these elements have uh, several weights, but you got to know what you're looking for. It's most abundant is 141 itself. Matter of fact, if I go there, show all of you, here's neodymium. Just go down to the isotopes right here, and you're going to see that the abundance, the natural abundance is what you're looking for. And the 141 has the most abundance right there. And this is pi right there. You can't miss it. You got the 144,000 in there. You get Pandora's box in there. There's a lot of sinks with this, but there's that 143. And it's neodymium and there's the 144, 144,000. And remember, 666 digits into the string of pi, 144 digits into the string of pi equals, 100 and, uh, equals 666 if you add them all up. More 666 reference. That's the great beast. So it ties into this statement right here called feed the wolf. Now, feed the wolf, the, it's the wolf. And what is the wolf? 24. What's, what's in Jupiter's symbol? 24 is in there. 24 hours on the clock. Feed the wolf is 60. And this card right here is 60 when you say it out. How about that? It's the 42nd card in the deck. 42 is right in Jupiter's logo. Jupiter has a big say in this, folks. Tied to neodymium, which is used to make magnets. Okay? Used to make magnets. So I decided to look at Jupiter. Of course, another look. You could do Zeus. Zeus is 21. The 21's in the logo of right here. The 21's in there as well. So Zeus is going to fit in there. Just using the Chaldean again. But Jupiter's 27. Going to bring that right into alchemy, tied into this element called Cobalt. Cobalt is the dragon, the great dragon, because when you go look at Cobalt, you're going to see that the logo they use right here is got the, it's got the, um, the dragons on both sides. And it's got this little wing dude right here. And then the pineal gland at the top, there's the dragon. And this element, when you read about it, it's going to tell you that it was there it is. It's the goblin. That's the word. I, it comes from the word cobalt, which, not, which is the 19. And it means goblin. Right there. So think about what I'm showing you here. The largest planet, supposedly, in our solar system. Whatever that looks like. Some people say, oh, it's not a solar system. Whatever. But it's the biggest one. And it has a lot of mythology to, you know, Zeus coming down, incarnating, and you know, having sex with women and a lot of those stories are in there. But it's tied to cobalt and this is the chaos and order I feel. Cobalt, you know, used to make magnets and batteries and, but it's tied to the puppet master. There's the 58 puppet. So is, is Jupiter the puppet master or is he part of the puppet master? 27. 27 is the dragon card in the medicine deck. But how about this? When you say cobalt, it's 20. And we go right back to the mousetrap. You see, folks, it's man's on puppet on strings. Puppet on strings. You just got to know your code and have fun with this. And there's the duality. I mean, in the same cipher. Duality 20. Remember, Jesuits 20. Masons 20. These people don't get hall passes. They're owned too. They're following a script. So this Cobalt 58 is going to be isotope 59. Again, science is going to round this up because the 933 to the right of the decimal is going to add to the 58. You're going to get isotope 59 and bam, there it is. I mean, you want to talk about nail in the coffin. From all my research, 
it's the game of life. It's 59. Tied to this cobalt element. And the 27 is the dragon card. The great dragon card hurled down. Of course, I'm going to fact check the 27 into the string of pi. And look at what we have right here, ladies and gentlemen. This is the source code. This is how tightly woven this code is. Mankind's not coding this. Mankind is just following the script. We're, we can decode it, but there it is. 29 and 30. And what do you get out your calculators? What is 29 plus 30? 59. You see? So you go right back up, isotope, 59, cobalt, 27, found from Jupiter. So is Jupiter running the game of life? I mean, if you watch the great show um, uh, with Ted Danson, um, I can't, I get a mind blank. Anyway, the Ted Danson show, I forgot what it's called, but he was Michael, Archangel Michael, the architect. Great show. I can't remember the name of it now. But anyway, some of you will know what I'm talking about. And then if we actually add up all the digits into the string of pi, where this 29 and 30 right here, here are the digits. There's the 27. There's the 27. Look at what you get, folks. When you add them all up, you get pi again. Again, so you see how Jupiter has a big foothold and all this, and I believe it's Father, Son, it's Jupiter, Saturn. They have a lot to do with this. Check out my last decode on the speed of light. I showed the astrology part of this. And then go back to the three of spades, do the English numerology of it, and it's a direct match. So Jupiter's 42nd card, the three of spades. She's got inside the logo. Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, tied to mouse. It's found... At the 141 right there and right there. How about that, right? Folks, what are you doing here? Wrapping your mind around this stuff. You can see the source code using multiple layers to all this kind of stuff. And then going back to this again, you know, feeding the wolf, feeding the wolf. That's what we're, that's what we're designed for. We're designed for that. And, you know, notice the spades is, spades is 24, wolf is 24. 24 is in Jupiter's logo. Make no mistake about it. It is there. And, you know, you get the all-seeing eye on Jupiter. We have the all-seeing eye in our brain. Cut your brain in half, you're going to have the all-seeing eye there. So Jupiter has, in all these stories now, and I've looked at a lot of amateur astronomers through telescopes at Jupiter. So forget about what NASA tells you. If you're not a believer in that, like, oh, NASA's full of lies, go check out some amateur astronomer telescope videos. And then you be the judge. And it is the striped planet tied to the tiger. I mean, the comical joke in my reality, my high school mascot was a freaking tiger. <laughs> you know, that's, that's the comedy in my life. And this is my planetary ruling card, by the way, for those of you that follow the cards. And then we bring it into the tarot. <laughs> And uh, we get a, a picture. So the game of life, feed the wolf, and the mouse trap is tied to the three of spades. Remember, the word reincarnation is 42. Let me just show all of you that really quick, because that's the 42nd card in the deck. Those of you that have been paying, there you go, reincarnation, 42. We're in Wonderland, 42. And Jesus was part of the crucifixion. 42. They're all 42s. So what are we to do with this information in the same cipher? Don't have to deviate. Well, I mean, here's the 42nd card and it's going to the tarot, get the picture. Bam, there it is. It's the three of swords. Look at this is straight up heartbreak. You come down here and you get into the mousetrap. It's going to end in the demise, just like the experiment in Calhoun's universe 25. It will end in an apocalypse because that's what this reality, this reality starts off glorious and it ends at an apocalypse, which is the great awakening. And then whatever happens after that, who knows, but it restarts again. It starts in the golden age, it turns into the dark age, and then it repeats. That's how I feel it works. And when you're down here, man, there's a lot of this during the dark age. This is the 53rd card in the deck, 52 and 53. If you match it to the 53, it's the iodine. It's the iodine. The, and what is what has Jupiter got on it? The eye. <laughs> Jupiter's got the eye on it. 
And then last but not least, let's check out where that 53 is found in the string of pie. Well, of course, as fate would have it, how tightly woven this presentation is, this source code, it's once again tied to the mouse. 20 appears at the 53rd, 54th. 54, of course, is going to be tied to They Live and New Station 54 tied to Xenon, the voice in my head. So many different ways I can continue on with this, but just to simplify it, there it is. Remember the word Yeshua. The word Yeshua in the original spelling is 53. 53 is the 16th prime number. The word hell equals 16. See, we're in hell, folks. That's what this code tells us. And it's inevitable you will feed the wolf, which seemingly appears to be the great planet of Jupiter. So anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had fun with this one. I hope you had a lot of bells go off and you were able to get some clarity on you know, just how this reality works through the source code. No one's trying to pork you over. Everybody's just doing their job. That's it. Just detach from other people's static and become the best little devil you can be. You can't help it down here. So I'd love to hear what you saw during this presentation. Keep your comments coming. Check out the description. I'm going to put all the links in there that I showed during this presentation. Uh, I'll put all my decoding links in there as well. So ladies and gentlemen, that's all I got for today. My name is Logan for Decode Your Reality. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, we will see you later.